Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel. And today's video is a little different. It's kind of geared towards everybody, especially non-automotive technicians. Matter of fact, this is like all it's geared for is non-automotive technicians. So this is why you should never, ever, ever, ever buy a Chrysler product or Jeep, Dodge, Ram, whatever you want to call it. So let's do this. video is geared directly towards the consumer. Uh, technicians, you're going to love this too, but uh, this is like the first video I've ever done that's geared towards a consumer. So please, please, please keep that in mind when you're going, ah, oh, he forgot to, about this technical thing, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. And these are not anecdotal. This is not like I had one bad experience with one Chrysler, so I should say you should never buy one or it's one dealer that I have a problem with. No, no, no. This is the brand. This is the philosophy. This is across the board. Um, and Real quick to just explain to you who I am and what I do and why 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 you should listen to me, right? Why I'm just some dude on YouTube. There's tons of us. Um, I will give you this real quick. So what I do in day to day is I run a small business out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. We have three technicians. Um, we're we're a mobile business, and our entire purpose and all that we do is we drive from one professional repair shop to another and collision centers and even to new car dealers, to the people that sell the cars, that where you take your car back to the dealer, we go to those dealers and we diagnose the difficult to figure out cars, the ones that no one can figure out that's been there for weeks and months and they've tried all the parts and spent all of your money and they haven't figured it out. We go there when a module gets put in or a computer, sometimes called a node or the brain or whatever you want to call it. Cars have tons of these, some 20, 30, 40 modules now. Anytime one gets replaced, it has to be programmed. It takes very special tooling to do that. Usually only the dealer has that or some of your nicer repair shops out there do. Well, we carry these tools for almost every single year make model. So a shop can call us for them and program it so it never has to leave on the dealer. It doesn't have to go on a tow truck and pay tow fees and go there and wait three weeks for the dealer to play with it and then charge them a whole bunch of more money for stuff it didn't need and in you know addition to the module. To give you that's just to kind of give you an idea. We are literally the people that they call when they need help. You may not know we exist. You may not know this is even a job. There are lots of us across the country. There are large corporations that do this. Probably easily 300 technicians across the country that do this as a day-to-day -day job. We don't replace parts. I don't have wrenches. I don't do water pumps, belts, nothing. I do no repair. I, ha I have like two screwdrivers and a socket set so I can get some plastic panels off when I'm diagnosing, you know, like a wiring problem. Please take that into consideration when, we're, when I'm giving you these. They're not anecdotal. This is like across the board, statistics, evidence, real life examples, percentage wise of what we work on. With that being said, the first reason you should never, ever, 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 ever buy a Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, Fiat vehicle. Your shop that you take it to has to pay a ton of money to work on it. So I'll give you an example. General Motors, in order to program one module to, to, like, to, to attach their expensive hardware they've purchased and computer to your car in order to put software in a new replacement module, cost that shop about 40 bucks to do it for the one car. Now, they have to buy thousands of dollars of equipment to do this, but that equipment can work for some other vehicles. So, again, not trying to go too far into this, but the software, the licensing required to do your one car costs the, the shop about 40 bucks. Now, if they're going to diagnose your vehicle, they can buy access for three days of the factory scan tool, the same thing the dealer's using for about $57. And that gives them access to use that factory scan tool with their couple thousand dollar piece of equipment and a laptop. There's something called a, a vehicle communication interface we can buy that allows us to communicate with the vehicle with a laptop. If you have that piece, you can buy access to the factory scan tool for about $57 on a General Motors vehicle. On a Ford vehicle, if you have their interface, you can purchase software for about 50 bucks for three days. Okay, on a Honda, it costs about $30 for a full day. BMW charges $30 to use, the, uh, to use this same aftermarket box that can be had that works with most models for about $30. You can, you can diagnose a BMW for one day. The software for BMW is about 30 bucks. Now a Volkswagen Audi product or Lamborghini and Bentley is $130 for a week of access, right? So that's getting up there. We're talking about $130, but you get a whole week of access. 
you can actually buy an entire year of unlimited usage for an Audi or a Bentley or Lamborghini for $900. So if you work on a bunch of them, it doesn't cost that much to get the tool, right? To get the software once you have the tool. Yes, the tool is thousands of dollars, okay? That's why we charge so much to look just to look at your vehicle. And that's not what this conversation is about, and I'm fixing the trail off on it. What does it cost to do that on a Chrysler? Well, first of all, once you have the expensive piece of equipment, which can be that universal one I'm talking about, uh, or you can buy the factory one. The factory one's about $2,500, and it's just a little bitty pod. It's called the Micropod. So, first things first, you need to make that pod to where it'll talk to the car. So you need to pay Chrysler $50 for the subscription to do that. That makes the pod where it will talk to the car. Now, now that your pod will talk to the car and you've paid $50, let's just say you're going to just replace, you're just going to update a module, right? You, you brought it in and they found a TSB that says that um, that you've got to do XYZ uh, to fix this problem and it involves updating a module. This is super common and coming up on part two, I'll talk about that a lot more with Chrysler. So let's say you got to do that. So now if you're going to do an update on this car, you actually have to have a second subscription and a third subscription. So the second subscription is called Tech Authority. So that's just service information only. But for whatever reason, Chrysler says you got to have that also to flash a car. That Tech Authority subscription is going to cost you as little as $26.95 for one day or $36.95 for three days. So if you've already purchased the uh, the subscription to let your Micropod or your your uh, universal interface work with talk to the car for three days, you might as well spend $36.95, right? But for sake of argument, we'll say $26.95. So now you've spent $76.95. So your universal device you've got a couple thousand dollars into will now talk to this Chrysler. So, but that's not enough. You don't, that doesn't really add much of anything. Unless the car is a 2018 or newer, you have to have both of those even to talk to the car. If it's a 17 and down, it's only the $50 to talk to the car. Again, that doesn't allow you to do any updating. So now you decide, okay, we have to update this car. We figured this out. So now you have to buy a reprogramming subscription for the one VIN number. So this is an additional $35. So I'm not good at math, but $76.95 plus $35, we're already over $100, right? Perfect. Now we've got to reprogram this, this thing. And all we're doing is updating a module. It just costs that technician... Over $100 just to reprogram your Chrysler. Absolutely, they have to charge you about $100 more on top of that just for the labor to look at the car and mess with it for an hour, right? They gotta pay their technician. The technician's gonna get paid $30 or $40, plus there's lights and other equipment and insurance. Don't get me started on insurance on working on people's cars, what that cost. Let's say that you replaced the module, right? And it's like an engine control module, or it's the thing for the key, or they just need to add a key. Well, now they have to purchase the PIN number for the car. So this, tech, this shop has to go get a locksmith identification. Now it's called a vehicle security credential. Uh, that's about $400 and takes a couple months to get. Once you get that, then you can go to Chrysler's website, put in all of your personal information as the consumer. We have to get a copy of your driver's license and insurance and or title showing that you own the vehicle. Have you signed this thing saying that you approve us to do the work? And then we pay Chrysler another $30 to get this four-digit PIN code so we can type it into the factory computer so it says, okay, yeah, you can go ahead and do this uh, security function now. You can change this module. You can whatever. So $50, $26.95, $35, and $30. So that's where we're at just to replace a module. I can do all of that on a on a GM, a General Motors vehicle, without getting all of your personal information for $40. I can do it on a Ford for 50 bucks. Now I do on some newer Fords have to get your personal information to do some security functions, but still, like it's a Chrysler. What the heck? Okay, so that's reason one. The cost alone of the shop just to work on your vehicle is outrageous. Okay, and now a lot of shops will not buy that factory equipment. They won't do it. They'll just ship the job to the dealer. So they're stuck using their aftermarket scan tool, which doesn't do any of that stuff we just talked about. Second reason you should never buy a Chrysler, ever. Realistically, let's talk about like software updates. So you guys have to update your phones all the time, right? As a consumer, you often have an update on your cell phone to fix things. That happens on cars. Like, 
if you're driving any car newer than 2010 it probably has a software update available that will fix certain small issues does your compass not update all the time do you randomly get a check engine light for no reason do you get a gas cap light for no reason sometimes does your car make a weird shuddering noise does the transmission shift kind of weird just only in second to third and only sometimes only when it's cold is there like a shutter when you're coming to a stop when you put the car when you put your 18 silverado into gear does it make a little clunk but the you know you've checked it out and all the u joints and good are good and everybody tells you everything's fine there is software updates to fix all of those things i just talked about i have never ever hooked up to a 2010 or newer chrysler at least in the last five or six years and didn't have an update that fixed at least 10 trouble codes that could set a light on your car okay i mean ask a shop that does a professional repair shop call in your local professional repair shops and i don't mean chain stores most of like firestones and hibdens and and big O tires and all those ones like that. Nothing against those guys, but most of them don't have any factory scan tools. So they don't do any updating. They don't know what I'm, you know, they're not going to know what you're talking about. This is kind of a different world of automotive repair. So, but if you talk to some of the bigger professional repair shops or your dealers, call your local Chrysler dealer. Ask them if there's software updates available for your car and if that's a normal thing. And somebody will tell you this big, long, drawn out story like I am about yes, software updates are a real thing. You have to have them done. They fix all kinds of issues and they prevent failures of components before they happen. So, I mean, every Chrysler I touch has software updates for the transmission and for check engine light codes. And I'll put a little example on the screen right here. I don't even know which one I'm putting up. I picked a random uh, technical service bulletin and there are at least 10 service bulletins for every Chrysler out there. This bulletin, as you can see, again, I don't even know what it is. I just picked a random one. There's probably at least 10 or 15 codes listed, and this is just a software update. And this is what we do every single day. I will tell you that over 65% of all of the module programming I do is on Chrysler for either a software update to fix a problem or a failed controller. And failed controllers are massive with Chrysler. ABS modules, engine control modules. The number one engine control module that I replace is Chrysler one. And, you know, luckily it's on most of the older ones, like a 2003, 4, or 5, all the way up to 2014, 15. That's what we replace the most of because those are failing a lot. I mean, like every single day we do three or four. And so let's look at the comparison version like another one. So Toyota. Toyota will allow you to get the factory scan tool with a universal device for about 65 bucks for two, two to three days. I don't remember what the, the time frame is. We buy it yearly, so I don't remember what the short-term subscription cost is for Toyota. So Toyota has a whole department and initiative geared towards making sure that all the independent repair shops have all of the service information and knowledge needed to correctly repair your Toyota. Why would Toyota do this when they have dealers, right? Because they know that as a car manufacturer, if you have a good experience with your Toyota, no matter where you're at, especially if you live nowhere near a Toyota dealer, then you will probably buy another Toyota, right? They're less concerned with how much money and profits they can steal from independent repair facilities that have the right, there's legislation about us having the right to repair your vehicle. You should Google right to repair. Toyota knows that that's a thing and that's going to be a thing because you have the right to choose where you want your vehicle to be repaired. And if it's you know, economically and financially feasible for the shop to buy the correct equipment and information to fix your Toyota, then they will do it. There's a Toyota representative on every Auto Care Association board that deals with this kind of right to repair thing. So they are heavily involved in making sure us as independent repairs have everything we need to fix your Toyota correctly the first time. Chrysler does not do this. They are doing, they continually add subscription cost to subscription cost. They increase the subscription cost. When you call for help, they tell you it's your, your hardware's fault, your computer's fault, and it's not. Now remember, I do a couple thousand programmings a year. I do more programmings on car modules in, a, in probably a week than most technicians in a shop will ever do in their entire career. What I'm saying is, is I do a lot of flashes, a lot of calibrations. Okay, we have a lot of hurdles to jump through to do this. You have to be a computer guy to do this, okay? Because you have to set up your laptop exactly right to do it, and it's a ton of work, and they don't make it easy. So... Where I'm getting at is with all those flashes I do, I'm pretty decent at it. And I'm pretty good at troubleshooting. Well, I've had four or five Chrysler problems, and every time I've had to call Chrysler, there are almost zero help. It's almost always a blame game of them blaming me or my equipment or my internet connection or my computer and not blaming their software. And every single time that I've had an issue, it has been a problem with the software when it got resolved. 
They either did a software update or a patch fix, or they had to change something in their own software just to fix the problem. They are not in it to help us help you. So if you don't live by a Chrysler dealer, you are not going to get a shop that's going to buy everything needed to fix your Chrysler. It is not worth it. That shop will not do enough of them in a year to even pay for the equipment. So it's a total equipment. If it's not going to make you money, why would you buy it, right? You as a person who just buys things, why would you buy something that costs you more money than what it's worth to use? You wouldn't, so we don't either. Reason three, you should never ever buy a Chrysler Dodge Jeep product. Their engines and transmissions have problems. Now this sounds like an anecdotal argument for sure, but when we look at like total numbers and overall, and we look at their like most popular engines and transmission combinations that go into vehicles, now again, my little disclaimer is, yes, you may totally have a Chrysler that you never ever have problems with the engine or transmission. And you were lucky, and I'm glad that happened. And overall, the majority of most customers will probably have the same experience. But there is an overwhelming trend of going into a Dodge dealer or a repair shop or a transmission shop. Go to your local transmission shop and ask them what manufacturer they see the most. I can almost guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt it will be Chrysler. I have probably seven five five to nine transmission shops that i regularly see on a week-to-week -week basis i can walk into any one of them at any point in time and i can guarantee you more than 70 percent of the vehicles in there are a chrysler product and then let's look at their most popular engines the 3.6 liter pentastar engine which is in almost every single chrysler that has a v6 now uh, and their 5.7 Hemi and the 6.4 Hemi. So the 6.4 and the 5.7 Hemis have like lifter problems. Just Google Hemi lifter. Just Google that and look at pictures. You will find pictures of destroyed engine components. It happens all the time. GM has the same problem. I know. Okay. But overwhelmingly, Chrysler 5.7, 6.4 is the Hemi tick. That's not a thing. That's broken. 3.6 Pentastar engine, they have cylinder head problems. Recall after recall after replacing cylinder heads and, and valve issues and drivetrain problems and little misfires. And oh my God, it's ridiculous. I'm If I see another 3.6 Chrysler that has a misfire and they've already put all of the new stuff on it and don't know why it misfires, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm telling you, just overall, the majority of them may not have a problem but it's overwhelming in the numbers that we see as technicians. It's terrible. So yes, you can totally have a Chrysler that doesn't have any problems and you can totally have a GM or a Ford or a Nissan or Toyota that does have a ton of problems also. A lot of it comes down to maintenance. The fourth reason you should never buy a Chrysler Jeep or Ram Dodge product ever, maintenance. The average maintenance cost of a Chrysler vehicle is outrageous. The fluid intervals you have to do is crazy. It's it's terrible. So there's two ways to look at this. We run into a, a lot of a lot of issues with people that don't do enough maintenance and manufacturers that call for a ridiculous amount of maintenance. Now I will say most of the domestic manufacturers, specifically Chrysler and General Motors, have a lot of maintenance requirements. It is very expensive to maintain one of those vehicles in the way that you are supposed to. Something called cafe credits, if you Google that, C-A-F-E, uh, corporate average fuel economy, you'll find out why your car is so expensive to maintain now because they will do every little thing they can to get an extra cafe credit because it saves them millions of dollars every single year. Well, each of these little things and new technologies they install cost you hundreds of dollars in maintenance increase cost. Chrysler has really expensive maintenance cost. In comparison, that is the major reasons why you should never, ever, ever, ever buy a Chrysler vehicle. So please, 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 Think about that next time you're going to go purchase one. That Chrysler does not have it in your best interest as a car owner. They will sell you whatever flashy things they can come up with, but will not help support the entire industry in making sure your car is fixed the way you need it fixed to be safe and reliable, a cost-effective way. So they are not looking for your, out for your best interest. Just something to think about. All right, everybody. Sorry for the crazy rant. That's the first one I've done, but that's what it comes down to. I just have a lot of issues with Chrysler lately, and I'm sick and tired of people asking me what car to buy, and then they go, I tell them, just whatever you do, don't buy a Chrysler, and then they buy it anyways. So, good luck with that. We'll see you next time.